I'm here at Pier 9 at uh, Autodesk and I'm having a lot of fun because they have everything which every workshop worker would love. So Hans, I'm here at Autodesk and I see woodworking machines, metal machines, CNC, we're going to do that a little tour. Why at Pier 9, which is a fantastic facility, why do you have that here? Well, we have it here as a, in essence, a feedback loop. So we uh, create a lot of software for making things and uh, we wanted to get more in touch with the making side. So we created Pier 9 and it allows us to actually get our hands dirty and actually use our software and try to create things and find issues and then where those issues come up, feed that back into the loop to improve the process and the workflow in which helps our customers. Okay, so here we are at the wooden, uh, the, the wooden facilities, all kinds of beautiful machines to create uh, wood the way you want it. So this is really classical, all kinds of metal machines. Um, I mean, you have all the modern CNC stuff. Why is this, this very much hand-fitted uh, hand operation also here? Well, the metal shop is, uh, that's part of uh, any operation. You need to get your hands dirty and actually make things with your hand in detail, fine tune. Yeah. Not everything could be done with computers, so we have the metal shop. We just have stuff without computers. Again, this is the wood, this is again a wood shop. How much software involved in, uh, in, in, in handling wood and creating wood? Uh? Not much software here. This is, uh, again, hands-on, a lot of manual, just reproducing it by yourself and the details in your own accuracy. Okay, human stuff. Let's go to the real exciting stuff, the metal shop. So here we are at the CNC metal shop 3D printing. And uh, what do you have here, Hans? Well, we have uh, two pieces made from the same model, one 3D printed and one milled. How long do you think it took to 3D print this? Let me see. Um, 30 minutes? No, this was six hours of printing. A very highly accurate print, but six hours of and printing. And an expensive 3D printer. A uh, very expensive. How much, a quarter of a million or something? Oh, maybe not that much, but quite a bit. Okay. And the print itself. Not a $2,000 printer. And then no, you basically no. have this part. And what is this? And no. this, and this you have to see, this feels very much different. This is metal. This is beautiful. Yeah, it's a aluminum. It's beautiful. It's solid. It's strong. This, how long did this take to mill? Okay, so this is the mill. You take a big piece of uh, metal and you carve out all the stuff. Yes. Um, very fast, 30 minutes. This took six minutes. Okay, so there's a huge difference in 3D printing. It's very... Uh, so why would I do 3D printing if it takes a lot more hours and, and it's less, uh, it's less uh, strong? So 3D printing, wonderful for quickly prototyping. I can take this model, hit a button, print it out. Uh, this, obviously, very strong. Yep. It's uh, this will last, and I can actually use this if I was actually building a machine. I could use this cover plate, and it'll. But last. but then, uh, how long does it take to make the machine uh, set up for this? Okay, so the setup for that is going to take you a couple hours. But once you've done that, you can bang these out over and over and over and over again and make them. Okay, so this is the uh, basic question: uh, If you design something in 3D, how do you get it into reality? Very simple with 3D printers. You have to wait a long time. They're expensive. And on the other hand, set up machine time, all kinds of molds. That's the question. Let's look at a couple of machines. Patrick. I saw Patrick here. Uh, Patrick had designed a beautiful piece in 3D and needed to uh, mill it out. And how long does it take to uh, create something in 3D and then to use a machine like this where it's being uh, where it's being milled out, Patrick. Can I ask you how long will it take you for that beautiful piece to be created? This will take about an hour to be milled. It's a pretty complicated piece. Yeah, it's, it's very interesting. Hey, how long did it take you to design it in 3D? The designing actually ended up taking a while because I did a lot of different iterations, yeah. uh, and then so maybe 10 hours, something like that. Yeah, on that order. Yeah. And then, and then to prepare it for manufacturing, to set up the machine so that it understands it. Yeah, like is that the same amount of time or longer or shorter? Um, probably a little bit shorter, um, but you know, also a few hours of time doing the CAM programming to actually program it to do these actions. So, okay. um, so yeah, the, the, pre the preparation is probably like 90% at least of the actual time of making the part. But then if you want to make 10, you just, let, you just press a button and they all make that. Yeah. 
So. Okay. How long this this kind of a machine? What is this kind of uh, what kind of machine is this? Uh, can you stand here, Hans? What kind of machine is this, uh, Hans? This is a Haas vertical mill, and uh, you'll find these things all over the place and shops uh, use quite a bit for manufacturing. Very accurate, very nice machine. And they're not, ex not so expensive. This is uh, how much um, would cost a machine like this? <laughs> uh, $50,000. Something like that. Okay, so 50,000 and there's lots of them all around the world. Uh, yeah. And the question of how to go from 3D design to making the, the part you really want is you want to automate it as much as possible. So that's really Autodesk uh, job. Working at that, we're working at uh, if you can cut any amount of time from a manufacturer's process, you're making the money. Okay. So this is another one, this machine, and it's a little bit bigger, but I think this is a quite a lot uh, different, right? This machine is uh, almost a million dollars. This is a almost a million dollar machine. Uh, this machine is very similar to the the Haas vertical mill, but it's also a combination of machines. There's a lathe in here. Uh, as long as as well as mill support, so you have uh, 11 axes that you can work with here. This is a very and show me what kind of parts show. you can make uh, uh, with that. Very difficult to show on camera, but this is making very accurate, very complex. Yeah, this is not parts. round. This is really this has a yeah, surface. This has this mode. Yeah. And this machine can make these parts at an extremely high tolerance over and over and over and over again. So this kind of uh, this kind of machines is a totally different kind of game, very high tolerance. So this thing here behind me, what is that? This is the Omex water jet. This is a uh, a device that uses uh, 55,000 pounds of water pressure and a mixture of garnet to cut through various materials. It'll it'll cut through four inches of aluminum metal like butter. This is a real sucker. Look how you can. It just cuts through two and a half inch of material and it can be huge. It can be a huge material. So how to basically put that into software is something else. Wow. It's and this is done by water? This is done by water with a mixture of garnet as the abrasive. And you can see this piece cut no problem. So these kinds of models this is pretty cool. And what kind of machine do we need for that? So what kind of machine do we need to, to, cut, uh, to cut something like this, uh, Hans? This is um, a big baby. So uh, the, these models were cut with uh, this DMS 5-axis router. Uh, this device is uh, capable of cutting through woods soft materials like that, hard cell foam. And uh, as I mentioned, it's a five axis. So not only can you cut vertically, but you can cut from the sides and cut around and get uh, uh, undercuts like you see in the model there. So we've seen now some examples. I mean, you're a software guy, right? You did software design and you're, you're really you've been with Autodesk for a long time. Long time yeah. And you've made all that software, the design software, and you never were exposed to this kind of stuff. This, this started a couple of years ago, two years ago, I think. Yes, uh, you know, I, I, I was always a tinkerer and maker of models and things like that, and, uh, but I was never a maker at this level. And now, after a couple of years, I've had training on these various machines and I've learned how to CNC mill, how to CNC lathe, how to use... Yeah, but I mean, router. that you do it, that's fine. I mean, there's plenty of people like you, yeah. but are the software people have been also exposed to this. I mean, the software and hardware are better integrated this way, right? Correct, and, and actually, I, because I'm learning and learn, I came from the software background, and now I can mix that knowledge of software with the making of things and learn how can I improve that process. I see issues that I'm like, our software needs to be improved. It has to be better to help the make, make things faster, better. You can take the programmers here and say, listen guys, I mean, that DXF uh, translator, that's really, oh, that's gosh. not of this. You, we should change that. We should make it easy for companies to work with that. Yeah, I've become sort of a thorn in some of the other developer sides because I'm now saying, hey, fix this or improve this. And Yeah, but and it's interesting. If you walk around this fantastic building with all these machines, you really see, and you, you try to make this model, it really shows you that you need to change. So, uh, Pier 9, great place. So this is the 3D printer Wahala. This is all computers and software integrated. Here behind me, 
I have a nice uh, interesting laser printer I meant laser cutter oh, let's see here a 400 watt laser is cutting through wood metal very efficient so you can use air nitrogen or you can have gases different gas if you want steel mild steel different kind of gas so this is a very popular machine uh, these laser this uh, this laser cutter well this one is uh, not as popular as our others because it's a little more complex to use and a little more powerful than what a lot of people need to use but for getting the job done for certain jobs it's a great machine so Hans you have this fantastic all these wonderful I mean all the latest of the latest laser print laser cutters la laser uh, 3d printers who's using all this stuff well it's actually a combination of people uh, there are people in the company that come here and get trained and use them for their own projects personal uses or also for company projects we have our artists in residence and our artists in residence come here they use these quite a bit they're here most of the time and then we also have a, a website do-it-yourself website called instructables and that's the staff from there will be in here working on projects that get posted to the Instructables site. And occasionally we have uh, special projects where we have external people coming in, working with people from the company to make things. Yeah. So th the original goal to get software you know, from design closer to manufacturing, uh, you're two years along the road. How is it going? It's going, uh, it's going extremely well. Our artist in residence program is, is overwhelming and they're using uh, really people like to come here for free and get drinks and <laughs> use the latest technology they don't mind doing that in San Francisco well you know there's some <laughs> complaints because uh, the drinks run out but uh, no uh, yeah it's hard to pry people away and uh, uh, it's been extremely successful did I the software did the software improve because of it well, yes it, software's improving uh, every every day there's people are providing feedback I provide feedback constantly uh, I am using the, our software to design and create things and I'm finding problems and I feed that right back into the teams and I've seen feedback that I provided actually uh, go into the product and come back out and solved and so great show some more nice gadgets so here we have the Fortis 400 MC okay so that is a really uh, tell me why is this so special uh, why is this so special uh, well, it's a it looks like a very expensive machine like it can do uh, a lot uh, Well, it can do a lot. It's a, a 3d printer that supports uh, ABS plastics uh, several other hard plastics fairly high accuracy and, uh, uh, and Speed speed not so bad. You know this uh, that's another problem with 3d printers no matter what is the speed is always an issue but yeah. uh, these are new in-house and uh, Sadly, I haven't yet been able to use it because they've been backlogged. I'm sure you will be using them. Hey, I mean, what is the what, what do you see in the next five years 3D printers being used to? Because, I mean, like you said, produ produ producing uh, them parts is a slow process. Mm -hmm. So they are for one-offs. They are for um, made-to-order. Is, is that the use? So, uh, personally, I think uh, 3D printing is, is less will less likely be used in the consumer market. Uh, maybe outhouse, like as you, when you go to a local uh, photo store or somewhere to have things made for you, you'll see 3D printers used. Uh, or, and then in the business, obviously, for prototypes and, and uh, one-offs like that. Uh, but I mean for spares. It's, it's great for spares. It's great for the, in the Boeing uses a lot to, uh, to have 85 percent of the parts are not stored anymore every in a central location they have all these babies in a large large commercial production environments yes their uh, uh, material sciences is a big thing right now uh, the materials are always you know like right now it's very difficult to print porcelain if you wanted your new printed coffee mug 3d printed yeah. that's very hard to get there's a lot of errors in that yeah. uh, so there's a lot of research in materials uh, for 3d printing also in improving the speed and also improving the, the, the system. How do you get a model to a 3D printer? That's a big problem. And actually Autodesk is addressing that with our, our Spark initiative, which is an a open platform that we're going to be uh, we're providing. Oh yeah, we'll, we'll take a picture of that. that uh, that's a total different kind of 3D printer. That's next. Okay, here we have the, uh, the example of printing.
So this is a nice 3D printed material, yeah. And it's it, that comes out of the uh, printer just like that? Eh? This comes out of the printer just like that. So a working prototype, two materials. Uh, once you remove the support material, you've got a, a functioning prototype. Yeah, I really stuff which works can immediately come out of the printer. Here's a, uh, a model that's a, in essence a fabric or like chain mail and this can come right out of the 3D printer and this is something that you could not do with a, a subtractive technology. So Working machines can come out of a 3D printer and they can be quite complicated. See like that kind of stuff. This comes directly out of a printer so it's unbelievable. And of course this kind of stuff we already know which is great for prototyping. What is this? It's a piece of wood that uh, has a pattern cut into it using the laser. And you notice as in the middle portion where the pattern's wider, it's stiffer. But as you get to the end, the pattern allows more flexibility. So now you have a piece of material that you can add flexibility to just by cutting a pattern. Hans, I think you're having fun here. Patrick is still working on his mill. Uh, not ready yet. Of course, fabric is also extremely popular, making machines which can make the clothing directly out of software. So this is a beautiful 3D printer. What's the story behind uh, this, uh, Hans? So we have a uh, we have an initiative that we're starting a, the Spark uh, platform, which is a, an open platform for 3D printing. And also, we're making the Ember printer, which is a. Uh, we're also releasing all the details and the specs of the Ember printer. Uh, think of it as what we'd like to do is is sort of help people improve the process of getting 3D prints to 3D printers. And uh, so we're doing material science research and also for the printers themselves. And then we're releasing all that technology so that people can, other companies can... So it's uh, an open source reference design and people can make uh, 3D printers themselves in all kinds of shapes, different correct. ways, and without any licensing, etc. Correct. And, and also the, the software portion, getting a model to a 3D printer takes so much work. There's a lot that has to occur. Yeah. And if you don't have to worry about that, let's say you're creating your own software uh, that creates models, and if you don't have to worry about how to translate into a format that can be 3D printed because you can just use the Spark platform, then it saves you a lot of time. Great project. So this was the Pier 9, the uh, initiative of Autodesk to get uh, software more into the real world, to connect them to the hardware and to the manufacturing process. Really interesting. Thank you, Hans, for your hospitality. Thank you very much.